Congratulations, you found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. You're doing great. This is Mind Pump. All right, in today's episode, we answered four fitness and health questions that were asked by our audience, that's viewers and listeners, just like you. Uh, but the way we opened the episode is with an introductory portion. So the first 40 minutes, we talked about current events. We mentioned our sponsors. We bring up scientific studies. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, After that 40-minute period, we answered those questions. So let me go over what we talked about in today's episode. By the way, we reference our show notes a few times in this episode. You can find any videos and things that we reference in our show notes at mindpumppodcast.com. So if you want to look up the video that we talk about or whatever, just go there. It'll be there. Uh, so we open up by talking about some crazy facts. Justin and I drop some knowledge bombs all over Adam's oh, face. Oh, yeah. It's a good time. Then Justin talks about Shannon's number. Yeah, mm -hmm. What's that? I don't know. Ex-girlfriend. Cool stuff. Yeah. I talk about my wife uh, and how she had a terrible accident yesterday. Poor, poor woman. Mm. Then we talked about uh, what happened in Wall Street. Oh, boy. They're trying to oh, shut down man. the average guy for squeezing all those shorts. Like, like when I talk Wall Street jargon. I love it. Sound like I know what I'm talking about. It does. Then we talked about disruptions in industries. The internet and technology is disrupting everything. And that led us to talk about a disrupting at the leisure wear company called Viore. This is a, one of our sponsors. They make amer uh, amazing workout clothing that looks so good. You can go to fancy restaurants wearing the stuff. Uh, oh my I know God. I did. I love this clothing. Very, cl very, very comfortable. Looks very good. Uh, fits your body nicely. Lifetime guarantee. Go check them out. You won't be disappointed. Go to vioriclothing.com. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash mind pump. You'll get an automatic 20% off taken off your entire order. Then Justin brought up uh, Louis Vuitton's new Skyline jacket. <laughs> Looks really stupid. <laughs> Pretty rad. And then I talked about my tri-tip recipe. I'm not the expert at barbecuing like Doug, the producer, is. So uh, I gave him my recipe, and I got his stamp of approval. By the way, I got my tri-tips from ButcherBox. And ButcherBox is a company that delivers grass-fed meat to your door at amazing prices. It's healthy. Uh, it's good stuff. Go check them out. Uh, in fact, if you sign up at ButcherBox right now, you're going to get a bunch of free stuff. Here's what you get. One free rack of St. Louis ribs, one free pack of pulled pork, and one free pack of bacon for free in your first box. I'm hungry. It's amazing stuff. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump and get all those amazing hookups. That was the intro. Here's the questions that we answered. The first one, this person wants to know if there's any value in doing uh, your sets with lighter and lighter weight so you can maintain good form. The next question, this person wants to know if a sissy squat is bad for the knees. The third question, this person wants to know any ways to increase the connection to their back when they work out. They don't feel their back that much when they do exercises, so we give some tips. And then the final question, this person wants to know about our diets. How are our diets looking right now? Because, you know, we're all trying to get ripped yeah. uh, now. Um, also, this month, we have put together two programs, calling it the Phase 2 Bundle, uh, and discounted them tremendously. So these are two workout programs, okay? So I'll go over the, the two ones that are in this, in this bundle. The first one is MAPS Performance. This program is excellent at training your body to move better, get more speed, more power, better mobility, get a nice balanced physique as a result. The other program is MAPS Aesthetic. This is a bodybuilder-focused program, so you can shape your body, build your body, and cut your body uh, any way you see fit. Combine those both programs, and you have a wonderful combination of mobility, strength, speed, and aesthetics. Now, normally, when you buy both programs, you'll spend over $300, but right now, you can get both of them for $79.99. That's the total, and you get both for the Phase 2 bundle. Holy shmole. $79.99. Lifetime access. You also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go check them out. Go learn more about this bundle at mapsfebruary.com. That's M A P S. F E B R U A R Y dot com. Hey, Justin. Yeah. Let's uh let's hammer Adam with some facts. Ooh, <laughs> some uh, tasty facts. You want to learn some facts? Give us give it to me. Crazy yeah. facts. Yeah. So I just read this one uh this morning. I thought it was crazy. Okay. You ready for this? Yes. A single human male, so just a regular guy mm -hmm. by himself. Okay. In two weeks, okay, he produces enough sperm. To impregnate every single fertile woman on the planet. Wow. Two weeks. He's got enough sperm. Just white gold. To make every... 
Yeah. <laughs> white gold. Yeah. Wow. Just, just there. Every what? every man has the ability. White gold. White gold. It's just its wrestling for name. the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got a white cape on with like oh, 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 glitter. Oh. What's his special? I could, I could hey, do that. Hey, what's his special move? <laughs> he, when he drops a load. <laughs> <laughs> drop a load. Just drop a load. <laughs> uh, it could get real nasty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It change the world of wrestling forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Justin. What's your what's your fact? You said you. Oh, I don't yeah. know how you're gonna top that fact. I can't top that one. I mean, it's not that crazy. It's okay. So the um the 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 top um shoplifted book in the world. I mean, you guys probably could guess. What do you think? Whoa, top shoplifted book. So the number one book. That's number been one stolen. book that's been stolen. Uh, yeah, out there. What do you think? Uh, that's an interesting. Hold on, question. Let me think yeah, no, give me a second. I want to think about this one. Yeah, too. It, it, it's it's okay. It'll be obvious when I say it, but you go ahead, keep thinking. Well, is it like I mean, is it the Bible because the Bible is the most sold book? There it is. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So that was an easy one. I know that was kind of you, a, it was hey, too much weak, of a, it was too much of a layup. Do you think, yeah, yeah, do you think people stealing it are like? Well, it, it's, it's, it's but, the but Bible. That's the thing. I mean, does yeah. it count when they put it in hotel drawers and then people just take? Remember when that used to be a thing? Does count? Yeah, it used to be a thing, right? They used to do that. There was a group. There was a specific group that that's what they did. They put. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I thought the hotels provided that. You mean there was a group that what went around called and- the Ninevites or no, no, no. Gideon's 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 Ninevites. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> that's from <laughs> Narnia. <laughs> I'm combining like that's, myths. You watch too yeah. much fantasy. No, that's, that's uh, Minecraft and something else. <laughs> Dang it! I'm trying to mine this Ninevite. I can't They're, get anymore. Ninevites. It's, it's a new cult. That so I just made so up. Gideon's, huh? Yeah, yeah. What the is, Gideons. What, is now, that, is, what they, does that come from? What does that word come from? It sounds. <clears throat> uh, do, are they, do they, just, they believe in like do they still do it in the background a little bit? Do they yeah. still do it, Doug? Do you know? I don't know. I, Doug I was like, I've seen it. Yeah, if, I've, if you've gotten hotels, if you pull that first uh, drawer open, not anymore. Yeah, I haven't seen that in a only, long time. That's I, it's been a long time since I've seen. I've that. only seen it in like Motel Six. Yeah, like CD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motels. You know yeah. what I mean? And I think they do that on purpose. You know what I'm saying? They're like, well, people come in here. They're it's it's such yeah. a conflicting thought. Like <laughs> they're you're going to gonna steal this. <laughs> like uh, I feel like they're probably okay with that. Maybe they feel like they're yeah. forgiven. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like uh, you know, it's the Bible, so God's not. He's going to be okay yeah, if I stole he's, this. He's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he'll be yeah. he'll be cool with that. Didn't you have another fact about ele- elephants? I thought that was fascinating. Oh yeah, elephants. So um, they apparently are way less fat than humans. They're leaner as a they're body leaner fat percentage. as body fat percentage than humans. Damn. Really? Yeah. By we, average, humans are. I think we're probably the, we're like huge, aren't we? Yeah. So you would you would call somebody an elephant, they get offended. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yes, I right. am an elephant. Yeah, yeah. I'm stacked. Speaking what? of that, I I think I need to uh, I need to apologize and and back off the fat comments with both you guys because now it's bleeding into YouTube and people are starting to believe. Dude, it. can I just tell you guys something? <laughs> right now? Can I say something? Is, is that, that, is that hey, where they're coming from? Yeah, I think I said it so much that people are starting to believe. No, it. that's not what happened. So, well, maybe uh, YouTube, our YouTube channel with the, the podcast. YouTube comments are so nice. That's, uh, they're always like that. So we we put the podcast on YouTube, and we've been doing this for a long time. Well, recently it's really started to take off. So we're getting a brand new audience on YouTube. These are people who've never listened to the podcast. They find us on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They just discover us. Obviously, it's a visual platform. And, you know, we don't look like the typical meathead fitness guys. We're kind of regular dudes that work out. We've been training for a long time. But anyway, the comments are hilarious. Yeah. There's one, guy, one comment's like, oh, this is great. Three three out of shape guys lecturing me about fitness. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. I started crying. That's why I said, I feel what? like, because I call you guys fat so much, I feel like now, now people are starting to believe that. You guys are. You guys are in great shape. I want to point that out. Right? Yeah. I just want to shout out to you guys for yeah. looking looking good. I appreciate well, that. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. The yeah. camera adds like, I don't know, at least 60 pounds. There's, yeah. there's got to be a factor there. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit. No, one of them said, one of them said, oh, three fat guys talking about speeding up the metabolism. Like, <laughs> like, oh my God. So harsh. You but know, then you, but then like some I someone was bloated who, that day, someone who listens, to, yeah, I ate too much bread that morning. Someone who listens to the podcast a lot inevitably will get underneath and defend us. You know, uh, they know what they're talking about. Yeah. They're really good. <laughs> they're, not, they're not totally fat. It just makes me feel worse. Yeah. 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 It's like, right. thanks, mom. Yeah, 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 I appreciate yeah. you. That's my, that's my aunt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Aunt Margaret. Yeah. Oh, oh, I had another one though. Uh, so the Shannon number, like, so I feel like you would know this. The, the Shannon number. I don't know who. This no. Is. no, okay. So I don't know who Shannon is. <laughs> It's her phone number. It was from like math, a mathematician that uh, basically, uh, so the the number of variables for a game of chess in terms of the amount of moves, basically, uh, like there's more possible variations of that than there is uh, atoms in the known universe. Wow. Yeah. 
What? Wow. So, the, like, there's so that, there's I was there's tripping out many, on that. That many variations? So there's more yeah. possible p- moves uh, <laughs> than there are atoms in the universe. Yeah. That's insane. It's something like 10 to the 120th or something. Wow. Like now, is either one of you good at chess? Uh, no, not good. I, I, I played, uh, you know, my brother for a while and I'd kick his ass, but mm. that's not saying much. He's, yeah, he sucks. I went on a kick for <laughs> a little bit, like in uh, junior high, early year high school, but that was it. Like, oh, but I wasn't like anything good. My, uh, not my, like with, with not the level of good, like you see now, like it's crazy. Oh, oh yeah. I my, never competed or anything. My son's really good. He's, he, he, he plays, uh, and he got into, apparently that's like a thing now in high school. I don't know. Maybe just him and his friends. It, no, it's always been a thing. That was a mm-hmm. thing when we were in school too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there's always a chess club and there's always like a group of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it moves back and forth between like the cool kids diving into it a little bit and not, but there's always chess. Then they don't there. like to lose, so they're out. Yeah. 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 They get all pissed. Yeah. Hey, dude, yesterday, man. Oh, my goodness. <coughs> my poor wife. Oh, what a terrible experience. What happened? So I am, uh, I picked up my, my, well, I had my son here, right? Because he had to do some testing at school. So we're on our way to the grocery store before I'm coming home. I get a call from her. And she's FaceTiming me. So I'm like, huh? So I answer it. And she, I hear the baby crying in the background. Can you come home right now? Please, please come. I'm like, what? What happened? Whatever. She's like, I was cutting the baby's fingernails and I cut his finger. And his oh, finger. no. And, and this happens to like almost everybody. If you've ever tried to cut a baby's finger, oh, which, yeah. and the reason why you or do that, they, they scratch themselves or whatever. Oh, yeah. And it's like every week you got to do it. All the time, right? Yeah. So she, he, he moved or something and she cut is like the tip of his finger. And baby's hands are very vascular. Yeah. So it, 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 it just bleeds a lot. It yeah. looks worse than yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was like trying to stop it and he's crying and I'm like, and she's just, and she felt terrible because, you know, she felt like she hurt him or whatever. So, you know, I come home and we're oh, doing yeah. the whole thing where I'm like bandaging a little finger and whatever. And so she just, t- even today, she feels terrible. That was yesterday? That was like That's yesterday. so crazy because yesterday Max cut his finger for the first time too. Did he really? Yeah, he was playing with me and I don't, what were we doing? I don't know what we were doing and it sliced his little finger open. It was like, he didn't even know. And the only way I knew was I was putting him up in his high chair and like there was like blood all over the high chair. And I was like, and I, I made sure to not make a big deal about it because Katrina uh, hadn't seen it yet. Yeah. And so I'm kind of wiping up. I was like, oh, Max is bleeding. And she's like, what? What? Mm. Yeah. And I'm like, he's got a little cut on his finger now. He's fine. It's like, it was like a, almost like a hang now or whatever on him. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was bleeding everywhere. It looked way, but he didn't even know what was going on. He's like doing stuff. Well, he's that's touching just, stuff. And that's bl- just it. Because once he stopped crying, he was watching, she put the cartoons on and she never, Jessica's really good about this. She does not put TV or electronics in front of him, mm-hmm. except for when there's a situation like this. Mm-hmm. I guess it makes it more effective too, right? So she put cartoons on. He's just, you know, he's just watching like, huh, oh, this is cool. But meanwhile, I'm holding his thumb, his thumb up in the air, trying to, you know, get it to, to stop bleeding or whatever. Yeah. But you have to apply pressure, direct pressure <clears throat> For like ten minutes, and if you don't, it just it won't stop. You guys so. don't use the so we don't even use the clippers on him. We use the filer. That, even with the file, them. you can keep going too far, and yeah. you can even kind of hurt them a little We've, bit. I mean, she's never cut him yet so with that. Like I did it with playing with him and something like that. But the file, she swears uh, by how. But easy I felt that so is. bad for her because she, you just feel guilty, you know. <clears throat> no, and even course. this morning, she's like, I, I'm uh, reliving yeah. it in my head. I can't <laughs> believe I hurt him. And so I'm just like teasing her, you know. I'm like, there's more moments like that to come. Oh, yeah, I, I told her. Just, I said, ugh. I said, honey, yeah. this if this is the worst you ever do to him, you'll yeah, be exactly. Crushing. Yeah, exactly. I said you're gonna damage him way worse than. <laughs> That's nothing. At some point, emotionally or something. Yeah, way to just, scare the shit out of me. Someday I'll reveal the things I I've done to my kids. Anyway, <laughs> by accident. We got to talk about this. How crazy what's happened with uh, Wall, uh, Robin Hood and oh Wall Street and all that? AMC and, and GameStop. GameStop. Oh, I, you know, I don't my know. God. I, okay, Dude. so I'm like, I have mixed feelings. Groundbreaking. On this, right? Stuff. I have mixed feelings. Like, so they're the. The free market side of me guy is just like, fuck it. You know, mm-hmm. this is cool to watch. This is cool to see happen. You know, the, the little guy winning and being able to manipulate the market like, like these. Taking on the hedge funds. Like the one percenters have been doing forever, right? So mm-hmm. there's a part of me that's kind of like, yeah. But then there's a part of me that goes, wait a second. This is kind of like disrupting something that has been normal mm-hmm. for a very long time. And this could fuck a lot of really rich, powerful people. I don't know how much I like well, this. Well, so let's talk about it, right? So for people who don't know what's going on or what happened, so um, a bunch of Wall, Wall Street hedge fund managers, or I believe it was one in particular, shorted uh, GameStop. So shorting is when you're betting that the stock is going to crash, mm-hmm. okay? So you're, you're, you're betting on the price of the stock in the future that it's going to go down uh, significantly. And if it does, you make a lot of money, 
If it doesn't, you lose a lot of money, and if it in, in the inf, it can go infinitely in the opposite direction. Well, isn't it isn't it also a very smart way that these hedge funds hedge their money, right? Because nobody is buying Game stock right now. It's basically the blockbuster of video games. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think almost anybody could guess the company is going to dissolve eventually. Right. So it's a safe, but nobody is investing in it, thinking it's going to go up. So they've got all their money invested. In these other companies, the way they hedge to protect themselves from that potentially losing is by you, well, in you short those stocks in two thousand eight. Right? When everything crashed, there were a couple people who saw what was going on with the how the housing market was being traded on the, on Wall Street, mm -hmm. and they shorted uh, a lot and they made a lot of money when everybody else lost a lot of money. But anyhow, so what happened is they shorted GameStop, and a lot of people there's this there was this page on Reddit uh, called Wall Street Bets, and they're upset about this because they were shorting uh, GameStop, AMC, which is the movie company, mm -hmm. and they're mad because. These companies are tanking, bec not because the market necessarily is saying they should tank, but rather because of forced lockdowns. And so they were like, this isn't cool. They're making money off of these companies that we love crashing. Let's all buy stock, which, of course, yeah. will drive it up. Now, this this Reddit page has got, I don't know how many millions of people <coughs> that look at it. So so uh, GameStop, it went up 1,000% or something like that in value. I think it was more than that. It was more, crazy. Maybe more. Yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, these hedge fund managers lost in one day, it was like a $14 billion. Well, didn't you say it was, it was like 3 million people they got to invest? I said that. I, said oh, that. Said I, that? I was just using that as an, as example. an example. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, oh, okay. I, don't, I didn't see actual numbers on that. But I was just saying that the... What it would take, right? Because you're you're going up against somebody uh, uh, hedge funds that have billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In order to move that needle to make a stock, you need like a lot of people. A lot yeah. of people because they're, and because they're all investing thousands, hundreds. You know, I mean, there were some stories. Yeah, of guys, some people were throwing fifty grand. Uh, yeah, or, that turned their fifty grand into millions, right? But well, it's impressive how they were able to get everybody organized to all do that at the same time. Well, these hedge funds lost billions and yeah. billions and billions of dollars because they got squeezed. It's called a squeeze, right? Right. And, because of this thing. Now, here's the crazy part. Overnight, overnight, all the trading platforms shut down trading mm. for these stocks. Essentially, even Robinhood shut it down. NASDAQ, the CEO of NASDAQ said, she said, we are going to watch now social media and online chatter yeah. and stop trading. Just to go, just goes to show now, you how now, much power. Is this legal? That's the thing. Is it illegal for people to organize themselves and to say, let's all buy a stock? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to find a way to, to, to hammer them, but it is interesting well, that- how do you stop it from happening again? Right. Exactly. You can't stop it. Exactly. That's, let, what, that's what- Just the, shutting well, down the trading. Well, I was going to say, in them shutting down to kind of prevent them, it, are they like acting in a legal manner? It's almost like they're protecting these big, exactly. these big dogs, right? Right. So crazy, and what's crazy to me is how quickly they acted. How quickly Ameritrade and E Trade and even Robinhood. Oh sure, it's fucking with their money. Stopped, stopped it. So well, it not only that, but you can see the writing on the wall too. That what's to stop this happening tomorrow and the next day into other stocks? Like that's what they've only. I think what they've done is they've only emboldened them. Is now that they're for, they're trying to force it down. Right. So now they're going to be more aggressive about it. That's which right. so there's a part of me who's invested in the stock market that is worried. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of theories that this is going to. There's going to be a lot of people afraid that they're they're going to get screwed, and everybody in the almost anybody who's been invested in the stock market the last year and a half is winning. Mm -hmm. At least I don't know anybody. Like I don't know much it's about. So inflated. Isn't yeah, it? it's so inflated that everything is going crazy, and so. You're going to have a ton of people right now that see this, and if this keeps happening over the next couple of weeks, you know, stock after stock after stock, and blocking people from trading things, you're going to start to get, you're going to start to see a lot of fear come out, and then everybody's going to start bailing on stuff, well, which is going to fucking pull the bottom out. So I have two ways of looking at this. Hmm. One is is it, yes, but maybe that is what they're telling everybody. Like we can't let this happen because it's going to scare everybody from investing. The reality is they're not driving a stock down. So, so they're not doing what a lot of uh, what, what sometimes people in these hedge fund managers will do, where they'll they'll manipulate things to drive a stock down and short it. They're driving a stock up. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's you know necessarily as bad. I don't know. I mean, if it's being manipulated, I guess that's not a good thing. But the stock market's been. It's funny because I'm seeing people post like, 
oh, the wrong people manipulated the market. That's why they're coming down on them because, you know, they always manipulate it. Uh, the big dogs do it. Right, right. Yeah. But now these other people are organizing and, uh, oh, it's the wrong people. That's just what it smells like to me. It's like, uh, you know, they're using their same tactics against them. And so it just, it, it sort of turned the, the table upside down. Well, and I think there's a lot of people that are like rooting for this right now. I'm just, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous to get too excited about it. Like, I feel like you're poking the bear right now. Oh, it's, it's, a big, it's you know, chaotic. Because what's to stop all these hedge funds, okay? that have billions of dollars to group together and say, okay. Right, they you, can now snuff you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you you might be able to get 3 million kids together to mm -hmm. buy on Robinhood with a, their their stimulus check, yeah. but you start fucking with all these billionaires on Wall Street, and they got a lot more muscle. So, Well, uh, like you kind of brought up, this kind of brings it back to social media, like in the power and like everything with the you know manipulating the elections with you know, all these things they've been worried about. It's like, I just worry now there's going to be even more crackdowns and regulations and things that we're going to have to deal with just on social media. A hundred percent. I mean, check this out. So here's what, these are the things that are trending right now, right? Here's one. One, this is a tweet that's trending. I'm assuming that the next time a hedge fund starts to make too much money shorting and destroying a business, that they will be deplatformed from their Bloomberg terminal and throttled by prime broker in the name of orderly markets. In other words, they're being sarcastic like, oh, I, I'm, I'm assuming the next time a hedge fund does this, that they're going to get shut down. Probably not. Um, Robinhood placed a freeze on everything and then is now seizing capital on accounts that they suspect of market manipulation per SEC order. Mm. So this is the stuff that's that's happening right now. And I agree with you, Justin, because what we've seen now in the last few years, started in 2016 when everything started coming down, that they blamed social media for, for Trump winning the election. Mm -hmm. uh, now, then they were blaming you know social media for shutting down conservatives. So now you have the, you know, the, the Democrats, the Republicans, both pissed off right. at social media. Now you have Wall Street pissed off at social media. Like These are all the people with power. Yeah. It's like it's it's a matter of time before they drop as many hammers as they can. My question is: is is it gonna, can they even stop anything? It's cats out of the bag, yeah. toothpaste is out of the tube. Yeah, bro, it's too soon. It, it's too late now. They'll find other ways to communicate and rally together. I mean, you organize that many people to do that, and you made a and you made a splash like this. Like you said, it's only going to embolden them. I think more people are going to jump on board with the next time that comes around. So. Mm. I don't know, dude. I, I mean, it's it seems it's it's, a whole new thing to consider from, now. From the where we're sitting right now, it's like uh, you know, and I'm talking to my buddies that are into stocks, right, right, and they're and it's like it's kind of funny, and it's like oh, it's like mm -hmm. this is crazy to watch, but I don't know, dude. I don't know how much I want to celebrate it or say like oh, this is great because I, oh, this could man, really it makes me nervous. <laughs> it makes me hella nervous, too. especially with the current administration, because yeah. uh, they're all you know they're always talking about regulating Wall Street even more. Right. Elizabeth Warren, I'm sure she's foaming at the mouth right now, thinking. Oh, this God. is her opportunity to hammer down even more because now you can paint a really nice narrative, right? Now you can paint this uh, this narrative that it's so corrupt, it's so bad. Mm -hmm. um, we need to tax the hell out of it. We need to, you know, uh, hammer even more regulations down on it. So that's what I think. Well, is, and is you know, there's out. a lot of people that are jumping on the bandwagon of like, ah, oh, fuck the rich, fuck the one percent. But it's like, dude, there's a lot of people that fall in the other percent that are in the middle of that. You know how many people retirements? Gonna exactly. Retirements are all four hundred one. Yes, stuff. that's what I'm saying. It's like you're not just fucking the one percent here. You you think you are mm. because you're messing with these hedge funds, which yeah, you are messing with them, and they're losing billions of dollars. But you're also hurting a lot of people in the middle that, like you said, they have their retirement tied There's up in that. A lot of downstream yeah. uh, effects happening. But you know, this is it. This is look technology. Technology and the internet was bound to disrupt everything. Mm -hmm. It's such a powerful force for decentralization. I mean, it disrupted the early on the music industry, which was impenetrable. Mm -hmm. The music industry looks nothing like it used to. Yeah. Then as technology improved, it's now going to decentralize uh, entertainment for movies and TV shows. That's happening. It's de when Once 3D printers become cheap and you can print, you can download your Nikes if you want, black, you know, on the black market and print whatever. Like I can't, ima I can't think of a single market that's not going to be extremely disrupted by, uh, by well, by I still technology. I still keep yeah. going back to what Tom Bilyeu said years ago on the show, the first time he ever came on, when he said anything that can be free will be free, and we're moving in that direction. Just to your point, like you, if you can get a three D printer that can print, you know, all you'll have to pay for in the future is the materials to get it to print it. I I agree because uh, let's look at other markets that were untouchable. Now we look at it and we don't think anything of it, but you know. 20 years ago, like the taxi industry mm -hmm. was, uh, you could not mess 
with the taxi. It was a cartel, right? right. They're gone. They're totally gone. Hotel industry, they're under attack with Airbnb. Uh, you have companies that allow you to rent your car, to rent whatever you want. Parking spaces. It, yeah. it, it might even be at some point where owning stuff isn't going to be worth it when everything will be easy to rent or trade or whatever through these decentralizing platforms. It's really weird. Yeah. Well, that's what interests yeah. me too about the uh, Bezos and Elon Musk race right now with the satellites that I brought up the other day. Like that's what's going on with, they're going to disrupt the entire internet service. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty much controlled by a handful of people that are that are running that right now. I mean, what's going to happen? Now, are they saying that they're going to give everybody just 5G free? Internet? No, I, uh, there, there's nothing that says they're going to give it away for free. I don't think that, but they're going to disrupt it. Right now, it's like a, there's like a standard of how, how much you have to pay. You can only go through like a handful of services. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what are they? AT and T broadband, Verizon. Uh, yeah, there's like a there's not a lot. Right? Yeah, because they all follow under the telecom, like the the old rules, right? Oh Where, yeah, so, with Comcast in that, because dude, yes. let's let's get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their day has come. And, and think of think about how expensive streaming and internet and phone stuff has become. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. That's like a serious bill for most people now, and they're going to go in and blow it all up. Just Dude, wait till it's next to nothing, just to have all. Here's that Here's another industry that's going to get that is on the horizon is about to get super just dis, uh, just disrupted is uh, big pharma. Because they have right oh, now, it's right. right now it's it's it, you know average consumer could never get this. Mark Cuban, but right they now. actually well besides that right they mm -hmm. actually have three D printers uh, right now that can print molecule by molecule and theoretically Just formulate it right there. Theoretically, you could download your drug and print it. You can print your medication. Because of these three, that's printers. a that, that sounds dangerous. It sounds real. That sounds crazy for black market. But I reasons. mean, if you could lock out the machine, you know, based off of like your prescription, like they would have to have some serious like, uh, you know, barriers there. Good what luck. What do you think? I know you. Good luck, but it's like, how easy is it to steal music? It's right crazy. Now? How powerful yeah. is the music industry? Right. Can you steal music right now? Still, if yeah. you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, of course. Super easy, and right. they're very powerful. That's yeah. Crazy. So when it gets to the point where you can print your own drug. You're going to have all these chemists that are going to tweak shit and make weird stuff. And people, and you know, people are going to fight for it because they'll be like, hey, drugs are expensive. I need my medication. So yeah. let me print whatever I want. It's going to be crazy, dude. Yeah, and this yeah, is just I the beginning. About that. I, I can't think of the last time Wall Street was like, because I, I have a lot of uh, family and friends that this is what they do for a living. And you should see the way that they're talking right now. That they're, they're totally head in the sand. And I'm telling them, like, man, you guys, your days are numbered. This is like just the beginning. Like, oh, no. So nothing's going to happen. I'm like, dude, you got a bunch of people on Reddit that just drove the price of several stocks up thousands of percent. Right. You think that that, <laughs> that move's going to go away? Yeah, but yeah. why do you think that would actually get rid of their position? Because there'll still be people that don't know how to invest their money that will look for somebody who knows how to invest their money. I don't see why you think that would ruin their position. I think if you're talking about big money uh, and you want someone to manage your whole account, sure. But things like, like Robinhood, that app, has allowed everyday people to just trade. Just to trade easily, yeah. very very simply. Gamble, yes. You know what I'm saying. So what? What does that have to do with your your family though? It does. I don't see them like not having a job. Because well, of that. I think when algorithms and the and the, and the technology becomes very easy to access, I think it's going to be a game. It'll be an easy game or an easier game. I think you're, there's going to be a, a a place, but I don't think it's going to be like uh, like they have now. Yeah, I mean, I that I won't argue with. Like, it's going to disrupt things. It's going to change the landscape of it. But I think there still be will, will be a need for that. It's just like the training space we talk about. Like, there's still going to be a need for coaches to like help one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one people, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but yeah, you, now you have access, right? I mean, just ten. I mean, part of what why we do what we do, right? I mean, that's we saw an opportunity to be able to communicate mm -hmm. long form mm -hmm. the same things that we would communicate to our clients. We offer these digital programs. We don't think we don't, we tell people, listen, they're not cookie cutter. The ideas that you learn from the things that we talk to you about you mold so now people have access to you know what would cost them right the amount of information that we've put out on this podcast uh, if you were to calculate all that up with what you would a client would have to pay to get all that from you tens of thousands of dollars no, more yeah. way more right? right so now people have that for a minimal price from us i think it so you're going to see disrupt but it doesn't mean that we uh, eliminated trainers you know, we didn't put all trainers out of no, a job no, 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 no. by doing that. I think that... No, but I mean, okay, uh, play to play devil's advocate. And of course, this, I don't think this will happen in our lifetime, but let's just fast forward, I don't mm -hmm. know how many years in the future, an AI, you know, trainer that comes across like a human. I mean, 
you know, theoretically that could happen. Well, now, now we're mean, talking way forward. Well, we're right? not talking that forward, actually. We're building towards that. I mean, the idea yeah, is Yeah, but that, to give you the same personal attention. Well, it'll never be. Exactly. That's why it'll never completely eliminate that. There'll always still be this, you know, individualized, you know, person who can customize things yeah. to you by the mi- at the minute, right? I don't know if AI could ever or get Or just to give you the connection. Right. So, yeah. I, I, but I mean, it's going to disrupt it and continue to disrupt it. And what we're building towards is that ability to- kind of do our job even better. I mean, that's what we're doing on the back ju- end with customer but service. But just imagine you you get this this app or whatever, and it follows algorithms. It's got this whatever. It, it, you tell it your temperament, what kind of investments you want, what your goals are, and then you give it permission to trade for you. You give it permission to trade for you, to make do whatever. I could see that happening, and I could see that being very successful. Mm-hmm. I really could, especially if it can act very quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, computers can go; they can jump real fast and make a trade or sell very, very quickly. Yeah, yeah. You know, based off of you know whatever. Yeah, so, I don't know. That's interesting. I don't know what it's going to look like. It's definitely. I definitely agree with you. It's going to disrupt it. I don't know. I don't see like their jobs being in, in, at risk anytime soon. Mm-hmm. I think that's going to take a while. All this. Stuff. I think. I think really, really, what it is is when I said that they're coming for you. What I really meant was the regulators. They're going. To, Wall Street is in the crosshairs right now. I, I don't see how they're going to win one way or the other. One side is saying, "Screw them, this is what they get." The other side is saying, "We can't let this happen." Mm-hmm. Uh, the the result of all of that is yeah. a heavy Either regulation. Way, yeah, more eyes on everything going on there is not going to be good for everybody. Well, personally, I'm betting on Wall Street because Wall Street and when you they look, hold the strings, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they hold the strings. They're the most connected to all the people in political power. So when it comes to setting regulations, they're going to set it to hurt, hurt the, the Robin Hood guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to set it to hurt the hedge funds. They're going to protect those guys because they're protecting the billions of dollars that all these politicians have their hands in. Now, what's to stop a right. company t- to sell portions of their business and not go public, You know, not be traded on NASDAQ? What's to stop a company? What if a company said, we want to raise money? We want to sell 100 shares of our company. Uh, it would be 10% of our, of our company. But we don't want to deal with the SEC. We don't want to deal with all that. We just want to sell it to private buyers. What's to stop them from getting on some kind of easy technology that allows that to happen, right? Mm-hmm. In fact, I know of a company I was gonna that's say, doing that. Is there one doing that? There are. There yeah. is, yeah. One, there are companies that are doing that. So there's, a, there's not laws and regulation in place to stop that from happening? No. No, it's just it, – it's, uh, right now it's such a pain in the ass and it's hard to connect with people. <laughs> But technology can make that happen. Wasn't there so, there was a company that was like you could allow other people to invest in buying a home with you, and then like basically yeah. you pay off that. Yeah, and then they they build the interest in they, they get the interest from you know your purchase mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, I think I brought that up a while. Yeah, yeah a long time ago. Yeah, right? it was like a year or two ago. I'm trying to remember what the name of that was. I wonder how that's doing. Do you you remember that, Doug? Do you remember when we talked about that? I do remember that now, Justin. When you brought, I I remember bringing that. It was a while ago when I yeah. brought that up. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Yeah, I remember the conversation, but I don't recall the details. Yeah, that's yeah, well. smart too. Yeah. Anyways, it's interesting. Like, what do you think is going to happen with markets like, uh, like, like clothing and apparel, like it, it, with three D printers? Are you going to just, it's going to just kill every, well, every, every designer, I, every, every clothing line that's out there? Well, I don't. I mean, yeah, possibly. Like, I, I think artists still have a chance. Like, uh, designers and artists. I think that, uh, that, like, creativity in general. I think people, if they could steer more in that direction, and like being able to come up with unique content in unique mm-hmm. uh, design there's gonna be a lot of opportunity to be able so to that's like, what sell I, that that's what i think the future is going to look like someone like, designs the the the, the, the prints. blueprints yes right and, and you, you sell the, the plans blue, and, right you sell it for a, a premium price like right. say you know like you a company like viore like we work with right and they they one of the things that i love about it is it's not just like right now it's really popular in the fitness space i mean there must be a thousand of these brands that are popping up that are just generic joggers and shirts and things like that that they're ordering from China or Alibaba then they're flipping their logo on it and they're like trying to and they're actually some of these companies are doing decent I mean I know I've hammered Gymshark for being like one of these these companies that have done this and done very well with it but I think that those are the types of companies that will get buried with like 3D printing the ones that will stand are the ones that have like real design behind them like the material the way the zipper is the way the buttons are yeah but the the designs can always get copied stolen and so the okay okay Okay, here's the deal. It's hard to predict. Yeah, so but best- you would you would you would trademark that yeah, just, just like you would anything else. Well, and, and so if someone steals it and is making tons of money, you sue the fuck out of them. Good luck. Okay, yeah, so- but you, you don't stop one one off here. Just like us. Well, it we takes don't- work to like you know gather all these like very specific materials and things. So I would think that you know that's that's going to be a part of of somebody's service. Well, 
I think the best way to predict, because it's hard, I'm thinking about all the different variables. The best thing we could do is look at past markets that have been affected this way. So look at the music industry. The music industry was totally disrupted. And today you can steal music, but well, do people still buy it? Yeah, but here's the problem though. That's what the reason they do, right? And they, now why? They, exactly. What do you mean why? Why do they still buy it? So they're not because they're not breaking the law. No, no, that's not. Nobody gives a shit about that. It's because it's easy. I know I can buy on on Apple a song for and I got it. It's clean. It's easy. I don't got to do a bunch of. I don't have to go jump through a bunch of hoops. But m music is still stolen like crazy. Mm. It'll, in, in my opinion, it might look like that. Like people will still, you know, buy it from the retailer because it's easy. It's clean. You're not going to get a virus. It's you don't need to go jump through. So a that's hoops. what I think will happen. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm thinking. One hundred percent. They're not yeah. going to be able to charge the same amount. It'll have to. It'll totally change it. Yes, but yes, I don't. I don't think it's going it, it, to, I don't think it'll make them obsolete. And I think that what will make them most valuable is the design to Justin's point. Yeah. That's where the artist, the, and, and I actually think that the, you might see a spike in that even where, because it'll be even more rare. Mm -hmm. There'll be so many copycats and people that are just 3d printing the same old shit yeah. that, and, and I mean, I feel like you see this in, you've always seen this in fashion. That's why things are extremely popular. Remember, Ed Hardy is a great example of this. When Ed Hardy came out of, of LA originally and was, it was designed from, like a famous tattoo artist that's what someone had this brilliant idea of like let's have these tattoo artists create this artwork then we will put that artwork on t-shirts and nobody was doing that at that time mm -hmm. and it was still a rare thing that you could get a hold of and mm -hmm. you had to wait there was a limited edition and that i mean shit i had shirts that would probably paid 150 dollars target started carrying exactly no tj max, oh, TJ max then yeah. they sell then they sell they sell the brand out they go to now from the company's perspective, it took, I mean, it still kept going up because now more people could yeah, afford to buy it. Though, but right? it lost its edge, though. But it lost its edge. Now nobody gives a shit about it. Everybody talks shit about it to this day about, you know, oh, you wear Ed Hardy. That's funny. Yeah. And they make fun of How people. How many shirts did you have? But they're, oh, God. I had, a, <laughs> I had a lot. I had a lot at one point. Adam's you know? so mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so it was cool, asshole. I, I, yeah. I had a lot at one point. I have to point, throw right? them all away now. Right, right, for sure. Dude, you know? I have to have uh, Doug pull this up, though. That was another one of my notes was there's a uh, Louis Vuitton came out with these jackets that were like skyline jackets. They're 3D like cities. Basically, <laughs> these guys are wearing, it looks so ridiculous. You have to see the visual Let me of see, it to really take this. it in. So yeah. Louis Vuitton did? Yeah, Louis Vuitton. So, uh, what? what? <laughs> Look how uncomfortable he looks. Wait a like minute. It. That's not, you know, sometimes you know what they do? I think they think. That's not real, Justin, is it's it? It's real, dude. I mean, but it's high fashion, like runway stuff, right? They, they wear the most ridiculous things they can, I think, to just be the, the fashion you know crazy what? he looks it, like you know it looks like some like reject superhero from like some comic <laughs> book so, i am city man dude, like look how look that's like, miserable they thing? look i mean well have you ever seen some of the stuff they do on these runways yeah that's what i mean it's just like it's sort of like art slash i don't know it's to, to me it looks like insanely ridiculous you ever seen the when they do the hairstyle ones where they go on runways and they like there was one woman who had a helicopter in her hair and oh like, yeah <laughs> I saw some propeller. show where they had like some competition where they were like, you know, making all these like crazy extravagant like uh, pieces on these people's that's, heads. That's why Zoolander hit it out of the park with that because it was such a great, I don't think before that you had seen anybody do like a really good spoof on that. No, it's oh, yeah. such a great movie. Oh, that's one of my such favorite. A, hey, you know what? Back to the to music though. You know what I was thinking too mm -hmm. is with musicians for a while there, they were making so much more money selling albums. And now because people buy music piecemeal one at a time. Musicians have gone back to making a lot Merch. of money, uh, merchandise and touring, mm -hmm. being live in Which, front of people. That fucked them last year. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. So um, I don't know, man. I wonder what it's going to look like for clothing brands. Well, you know, the difference, though, and I have to bring up with, with that argument you're making is that music, once you create the music, like it's done. It's Now you're just streaming. You, you can you can sell a million of it. It doesn't cost a company any more money or the artist any more money to produce it. Right. With clothing, there's material that's involved in that. Right, but if they're just so, selling the plan and you're yeah. printing it at home, right, and it's similar. So then maybe what it'll be like is that getting a hold of the material or knowing what the exact material is. There's yeah. going to be we'll, way we'll get all specialized with e it. exactly. Yeah. And I think there'll what will make it different and separate it from that is the how unique all that is, mm -hmm. how uniquely it's designed, the material, how unique that is. That's how they'll be able to keep their prices up yeah. higher. But then if you just want to print a T-shirt, like yeah. everybody's going to. Well, hey, do speaking that. of Viore, did you see the the new uh, joggers they have? The yeah. new colors? Oh, yeah. dude, they got some rad colors. They just did that with almost everything. I mean, 
mean, I know Doug is big on their their core shorts or whatever. Right. I know that I love the I'm Sunday big on joggers. Their jackets, the ripstop jackets. It's it's almost like a flannel, but it's like a one solid color. Yeah, it is awesome. Yeah, their jewelry is still crushing, and I'm seeing them being mentioned in more and more mainstream uh, media talking about. Well, them I brought the, I brought it up last time that we had a commercial for them when uh, Choki did a, a story and she did the whole this or that. I was blown away by. I mean, Lululemon's a, a brand that's been around long enough now that it's like like known as like the. It was like a standard. Yes, yeah, right. For athleisure. Exactly, and so to see that, I mean, I want to say ninety eight percent of those circled Viore uh, over Lululemon, which is really cool to see. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're taking over, man. You know, they're, they're making waves for sure. I know. Speaking of our sponsors, so uh, I'm making tri tips the, from from Butcher Box, and I think I've I am not nearly as good, especially as, as you, Doug, or Adam. I know you guys are super like barbecue uh, masters or whatever. But uh, I, I, I figured out how to make tri-tips just amazing. Okay, right. let's hear it. So here's what I do, What's right? the formula? So here's what I know. You, get, you know what? I'm almost, I'm <laughs> almost scared like to I, tell you. I, because order, you guys are gonna, I order it from... <laughs> no, I'm scared to tell you. Oh, yeah? Is that what you do, Sal? So it's basic. <laughs> anyway, so I put... I, let's hear it, you basic bitch. Uh, I, Salt, and then I cook it. Yes, <laughs> it's amazing. That's it. No, I, I, I get the, the, the real uh, kind of coarse salt, and I crust both of them really nice. Okay. I leave them out for a little yeah. while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then I go olive oil. Yeah. Then I go uh, garlic, Naturally. garlic powder. Okay. Then lots of rosemary on both sides. Then I get my cast iron skillet, and I sear both sides so that it's not. It makes like a nice brown, almost kind of crust. Then I put it in the oven, and then I use the thermometer. Oh, comes out incredible. That's not yeah, bad, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are not, you just saying that? Sounds to be nice? legit. Yeah, that sounds. Is legit. that okay? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Thirty to sixty minutes. That's about all you want on the 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 putting. The I don't even time it. You know what no I do? No seasoning. The Boon seasoning appetite. part. What do you mean? That's so you only want to put it for about 30 to 60 minutes. When you're doing you're doing like a like a dry rub like that. Like when you well, do the a, olive oil makes it a little wet, but is that the same? Yeah, you still okay. you're doing your main thing you're doing is your your salts and your rubs in there, right? So yeah. when you're doing rubs like that, it's like 30 to 60 minutes, right, Doug? It should be about 30 to 60 before. If you're doing a marinade that you do overnight, like like mm. liquid, like Worcester sauce and shit like that. Wor Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. How do you say it? Worcester. Yeah, I have no idea. Worcester, Wor Worcester. no? No, it's Wor Wor Worcester. 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> no. Worcester. You know, know what? Sometimes you say shit fucked up and yeah. then I can't say it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you blame I knew how to say it. So if yeah. that's the case, I'm going to blame it on somebody else then. Somebody else said it fucked up to me yeah. and that's, I just repeat Worcester. it. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. when it you was the best of Shires. It was the worst of Shires. Worst of Shires. Worst of Shires. I put up a meme yeah, 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 yeah. the other day. Uh, what, yeah. What is that Worcester? That sounds right. What is that anyway? What is that made of? Is that gluten? There's gluten in that, isn't there? I have no idea what's in it. But Doug, am I not right about the rubs, the dry rubs? No, I'm no expert on rubs. Oh, okay. Okay. No, no, no. Mm, He's a rubbing rub. expert. He's a wet rub. But not the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not I, that I'm pretty of. sure that. I'm right about that. I think it's 30 to 60 minutes if you're doing dry rub. If you're going to marinate it, you can stick it in the refrigerator okay. or whatever for Okay, give me a good marinade on the air right now oh, for, know, for the grass-fed tri-tip. I get my tri-tip from ButcherBox, grass-fed. What's a good marinade to leave in overnight? Can you do it on the spot? Mm. Oh, that's a tough one for me. I mean, I'll use sometimes like a... Red wine and some soy sauce mm -hmm. and some garlic. And then you just soak marinade. it in there? Yeah, marinade, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. I haven't done a, an overnight marinade like that in a long time. I normally do rubs. It's just quick and easy. Yeah, I like rubs. Because then I, you pull it out of the refrigerator or do a rub on it while I'm getting the barbecue all ready and stuff like that, and then you're good I, to go. You know what I haven't it's tried? Like crusts. Yes. You know? like yeah, I like that. That's good. You know what I haven't tried that I, I don't know if it'll be good, but you keep selling me on it, Justin, is the coffee. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's so it's just coffee garlic. ground. It, well, yeah, there's a lot of other little spices in there, but yeah, coffee is like it, it just changes sort of the the texture of it somehow. So I I told you Traeger has a good. I I have. I'll let you borrow it. Like, now I, does it taste like coffee when you eat the no, meat? No, 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 no. It doesn't. Not at all. It yeah, doesn't, it doesn't taste like coffee. Do you get all like like do you get all caffeine from it? No, <laughs> Doug. What is um uh, you know, know. <laughs> you brought up Butcher Box. They have a they have a special another special going on right now. And what is that? They have a different types of ribs. Is it not what we normally would order from St. Louis? The St. Louis ribs i mean there's there's two types they have the baby backs and the st louis oh i haven't tried the st louis ones yeah they're good they're okay good. have yeah, you I'm, yeah i've in fact i think that's the ones i've been buying for the last while oh really yeah i've only done the baby back from them which i absolutely mm. love i mean it's like fall off the bone when i use those like i've got the timing for that those ribs and that size down better than mm -hmm. anything else so anytime I've kind of gone outside of that, yeah. I, I've, I've been. Anything I could put barbecue sauce on, I'm in. <laughs> it's this <laughs> cheese. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah. of uh, speaking of meat, uh, man, I tell you what, no, no matter what, I'm just my uh, this is just how I am. If I try to reduce calories by and maintain a balanced macro profile, mm -hmm. I, okay. So if I have my carbs, my fats, and my proteins, but I just cut it down, 
my appetite just goes too high. The only, it's way more effective for me personally to cut my calories by cutting carbs. Of my appetite does not. Hunter, I've always said that, dude. It makes yeah. a night and I even noticed like so. Yeah. Uh, the so other, if I cut carbs, I'm not nearly as hungry. If I cut everything yeah. and my carbs are still there, it's like there's I'm, that satiating. I'm effect. too damn hungry. No, yeah. I'm the same. I've always been. I'm in fact, I use eating carbs early to boost my appetite. Yeah. So I I, I did that day in the life thing last week, right? For our our uh, Instagram page. That morning, I get up and I have thank you. I get up and I have oatmeal. And within two hours, I'm starving. If I don't do that, I could easily go till we get here and eat that same egg and bacon sourdough mm -hmm. breakfast that we have. I'm hungrier when I actually eat the the early uh, oatmeal breakfast before I go into that. Oh yeah, it, and I did this when I when I was competing. I would have because I had to get so many calories in. I found that if I started the morning with that carb, like a high carb with a bunch of oatmeal and fruit to start my morning early, mm -hmm. I had more of an appetite for meal number two than if I just didn't eat anything. If you like steak and eggs. Like yes. everything on. It's wild to me. Dude, it's just it's it's just not as satiating. I can't do it for me. Now, I've, I've worked with people who do okay with cut, with just reducing everything and they're more balanced. And I get the, the pluses of that. Obviously, if I have more carbs, I tend to perform sometimes a little better in the gym. Although, uh, adding more salt to my diet per the episode from Walb Wolf is really making a difference. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I noticed a drop in performance when I cut uh, you know, carbs or whatever. But yeah, my appetite. So when I'm trying to get leaner, it's, it's cut the carbs, uh, cut carbs down for me because my appetite is m much easier to manage. I Otherwise, agree. I'm walking around hungry and it's just not, it's stupid. I and I, it, yeah, I just go overboard. First question is from The Last Flare. Is there any value in strength gain by working in many sets but decreasing weight with each set to maintain form? No, no. This is a really, really easy way to lose all your muscle. <laughs> oh, bro. Stop it. I used to do that. I love doing this. Panic. Oh, this is, this is great. I actually... So I love this question because uh, I don't think we've addressed this and talked about this or it's been a while since we have. Um I, I, this is how I trained for a really long time. When I first like uh, became a trainer, like one of the things that I, I became very meticulous with my form, like the importance of form and technique that when I would do sets like this, uh, I think the old traditional way when I was a kid growing up was, you know, keep loading the bar more and more and more to see how much you could move. I went the opposite way when I got all my training certifications and started getting into training people and realized how important form and technique was. Mm -hmm. And so as sets would go on, I would decrease weight and just keep perfecting my form. If the weight was a little light, then I would just slow down the repetition. I actually think there uh, more people should do this, especially when you're really getting into weight training and trying to get the mechanics down. Yeah, I think there's, there's so many different ways to manipulate uh, the sets um, as you're going through them. Of course, there's a pyramid, right, where you work up in the weight and then you work down in the weight. There's, a, there's the, what they call reverse pyramid. There's, I mean, I, there's, a, there's 101 different ways to manipulate your sets. And the benefit of doing this is it, it adds novelty, uh, variation to your lifts, and it changes your focus. Um, mm -hmm. Always focusing on the same thing all the time is a great way to lead, the, you know, to, to go to, to plateau. It's a great way to cause potential injury. Uh, one of the best things you could do is, is change it up. Once your body stops responding to one way of training, then you try moving into a different way. And yeah. like Adam was saying with this, it's excellent because the focus is entirely on form. I mean, you're doing 10 reps and the goal is I'm doing, I don't know, let's just say I'm eight sets. I'm doing eight sets of deadlifts, 10 reps. I want all 10 reps of every single set to be perfect, yeah. which means by the time I get to the fourth and fifth set, I'm probably going to have to start Not to go. Not probably. Well, you have to. Right. Who do you know that can do 10 perfect form on sets one and two and then sets five and six there? Right. Well, besides me. No. Isn't that <laughs> yeah. Stop. You can do that. <laughs> no, you see this with professional lifters, Olympic lifters. Like You see this because the sharpening their technique and form a lot of times will provide even more uh, opportunity for them to lift heavier weights. 100%. You know, and if they don't do that and they don't get the technique you can master it uh, you know they're not going to achieve the potential that they could have otherwise. So this is just another way to uh, you, you know add a whole new set of, of tools in your toolbox. Yeah, there's even this you can even try something like this where you pick a weight and let's say it's about 80 to 90 percent intensity. It means it's, it's, it's hard but you're not going to failure and you say, okay, I'm gonna do uh, six reps of this exercise and you do six reps pretty intense. And then you say to yourself, for the next five weeks, I'm only doing six reps of this exercise. Even if I feel stronger, I'm only doing six. At the end of the six weeks, I'm going to add weight. There's another technique like that where 
you get so good at the exercise, but by that by the time it, you add weight, the weight you add is is quite significant. So again, there's so many different ways to do this, but this one that was just asked is is, is one of my favorite ones for sure. Next question is from Joel Muitari. Is the sissy squat bad for the knees? I hope not. We've yeah. programmed it a bunch of times. I know. <laughs> you know when when I when I first started yeah, became a be trainer, um, I used to think there were a lot of exercises that were just bad. Oh, like, if I saw one, if I saw somebody do a sissy squat now, or I mean back then, I would have freaked out. As totally, a trainer. I, I, I totally thought, as a new I, trainer. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought behind the neck presses, don't no, never do them. You know, behind the neck pull downs, never do them. Don't go all the way down with a dip or with a bench press or whatever. Uh, because it's bad uh, for your joints. Here's the truth, and I'm going to make a blanket statement that's completely true. Any movement, any movement, any exercise is safe so long as you have the strength, mobility, and stability to perform it. Mm -hmm. Any movement, the craziest movement you can think of, as long as the person performing it has the strength, stability, and mobility to do it, that movement is safe. Yep. That's the key. So is a sissy squat bad for the knees? Depends on who we're talking about. Yeah. If, if you're strong, stable, you've got good technique, good mobility, good form, uh, no, it's not bad for the knees. It's great for the knees. It's a great exercise. You have the capability. The That's really what matters. I mean, the same argument for like a Jefferson curl. Like it's, yes. it, Somebody will see that and immediately think like, oh my God, they're going to destroy their lower back and why would you ever do this? Well, obviously it's not for you. Like this is something that's a very advanced technique, you know, for uh, you know, gymnasts and whatnot, but there's always a case you could actually make for a certain type of a movement. It's just the, the amount of load they're using or, you know, the control, the strength they have to perform it. It, uh, safely and properly, that's what you have to evaluate. No, yes. there's no such thing as a bad exercise. There are exercises that are performed bad, but mm -hmm. there's no, no such thing as as a bad exercise and it's a routine or lift, right? I mean, yeah. you can do, in like your point, if you have control, you're stable, you can do anything. And that's also why I tell trainers, to ca I caution trainers to not judge when they see somebody else doing something because you have no idea what the application is for that. Yeah. You have no idea what that client's goal is. And if they're performing it with good technique and form, you may think it's a stupid exercise for your goals and what you're trying to achieve, but you have no idea what that person's trying to do. Right. Now, to be fair, uh, some exercises have way higher risk uh, to reward ratio. Right. Um, for example, Olympic lifts. Uh, Olympic lifts are far riskier. That doesn't mean they're bad. It just means you need to have really, really good technique and really, really good form and good control in order to perform them in ways that uh, don't injure you. Mm -hmm. um, so all exercises have this, right? Like a, like a dumbbell curl very low risk uh, compared to a barbell squat, which might have a lot uh, more of a risk. So sissy squats is one of those. Sissy squats is, I would say, you know, if you, it's probably in the middle of, in terms of risk uh, for the average person. But if you're strong enough to do it, you do it right. You've got good mobility. It feels right to you. You've got good form. It is a phenomenal exercise. And if I compare a sissy squat to a leg extension, mm -hmm. both people having, like I said, those prerequisites, right? Good technique, good stability, good control, good mobility. The sissy squat is superior. It's just more functional. It activates the muscles, in my opinion, in a better way. Um, I, I've never, I still, I, I don't do leg extensions ever again. Ever since I did sissy squats and I did them right, yeah. I was like, did, leg you, extensions did you do a good uh, YouTube video on this? We did. We have, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, Jackie will link that in the show notes. T to me, this is just one of those things that like, um, I didn't know how to do a sissy squat. Like I know I never had somebody teach me. Like, and if I saw somebody doing it, I'd be like, that's absurd exercise. Oh, it's Why very would... rare you're even gonna see it. Yeah, it is. It's very rare you're gonna see it. And then if you just see see it for the first time and think that you're gonna be able to go do it and with proper form, you're gonna want to be taught. So you need to want to have a coach, I think, that teach you or a trainer teach you, or watch like a tutorial that we've done on it where you explain the details because how you do it matters. Mm -hmm. If you just if you see someone just get on their tippy toes and rock their knees forward and then try right. and come back and you don't understand how to how to move i think it could be a really challenging exercise and not ideal for a lot of people especially if you're somebody who has very limited ankle mobility that's a really tough exercise to perform correctly but man if you do that i mean it, it i eliminated leg extensions yeah, same. I've, i haven't done a leg extension since i learned how to do a sissy squat yep. properly because i just i feel way more in my quads it's way doing, more functional oh way way more functional mm -hmm. next question is from alex x837 any tips to increase mind muscle connection for the back? Oh yeah, this is a big one that I would have to really focus pretty much every new client that I had, 
this was the hardest area for them to feel, probably because they can't see it. It's behind you. Um, we don't. We're not really familiar with the the, the feeling of a muscle in the back contracting. So there are a couple tricks uh, that I used uh, that would help. Now, as a trainer, one of the easiest things I could do is literally touch the muscle I want the person to feel. Right. That outside feedback helps the person focus on feeling the muscle. But if you're doing this yourself, there's a couple things you could do. One thing you could do is focus on pulling with your elbows. And that sounds weird, but if you're doing a row, imagine you're pulling with the elbows rather than pulling with the hands. In fact, what you might want to try with that is a, is a lighter grip. So rather than gripping really, really tight with your fist, mm -hmm. you grip with kind of the ends of your fingertips. Obviously, you're going to use a lot less weight uh, in order to do this. And then you imagine that you're pulling with the elbows and you might be able to feel more of a connection uh, to the back with doing that. And then the second thing you can do is to pre-exhaust uh, the back muscles with an yeah. isolation movement. So a pullover or a straight arm pull down, start your workout with that, feel the muscles in the back a little bit with that, then go do your rows and your pull downs and stuff and it should make it easier. The only problem with that is that if you already have a really poor connection and you don't understand how, how the back works uh, and activates, I think that you go over and you do an isolation exercise and you just do a point. The reason why I think this is so difficult for us is that we just are never in that we're never yeah. using those muscles mm -hmm. we're, we're we're so anterior driven we're uh, we're so rounded forward everybody is even people with pretty damn good posture still kind of have this slight forward shoulder because mm -hmm. we do everything in front of us yeah. nobody types on a computer behind them nobody is answering their phone behind them you're doing everything in front so we can't help but have our bodies kind of shaped that way and the worse you are the more difficult it is for you to activate your, because everything is in the position of the shoulders mm -hmm. yeah. if you can get so for me like teaching a client as i would i would go in and manually take their shoulder girdle and move it back and mm -hmm. be like, okay, look at when you take your shoulders and we move back here, now we can engage the back. Mm -hmm. If your shoulders are forward and you pull weight into your body, your arms are going to do all the work and you're not going to feel anything in the back. So it's all in that shoulder girdle and getting them to understand that that needs to pull back in order to engage the back muscles. That's where I find yeah. that that's the heavy most emphasis on posture yes. in the very beginning too. That it's definitely a lot of times the shoulder is getting in the way of that. And two, it might sound simple, but a lot of times like I'll just, I really want to focus on one at a time, like one side at a time. I know that a lot of compensations happen, you know, when we're adding both arms and we're trying to pull simultaneously. A lot of times people don't, you know, can't like hold themselves and stabilize themselves properly and really understand like that connection and feel it as much. And so I'll do like unilaterally and then we'll, we'll, we'll really kind of hone in on the posture of it and trying to drive it in, uh, you know, and drive those shoulders back. Yeah. One more thing too, is uh, how you prime uh, before your workout can make all the difference in the world. Uh, one of the best priming movements before a back workout is uh, prone Cobra. Prone, prone Cobra requires no equipment. And if you if you follow the movement, if you do the movement properly, in other words, you just copy the movement. And we have a video on Prone Cobra, so we'll make sure to link that in the show notes as well. If you do that before you do your back workout, because you'll pre-exhaust the back muscles a little bit, you'll feel them connect a little bit through Prone Cobra, it should be easier to feel them uh, in your back workout. And literally, it's a spend five minutes doing Prone Cobra, move into your back workout, and, uh, and then you should have a better connection. Next question is from Catherine Health Journey. What are your diets looking like now? Oh yeah, you really you're the one out of all of us. I think that's changed the most re most recently, correct? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I just recently now I've uh, breakfast is I've I've tackled with breakfast. So what I do with breakfast is I've eliminated uh, carbohydrates uh, from my breakfast, and it's mainly protein and a little bit of fat uh, with breakfast. Lunch and dinner are very similar to how they were before, so I tend to do that. I tend to move kind of in phases, and breakfast is the easiest one uh, to tackle. But yeah. I'm I'm high protein, uh, moderate to high fat, and moderate to low carbs uh, right now. So my carbs are probably around, I would say, 150 uh, grams a day, 100 to 150. For me, that's moderate to low. Uh, when I go real low carbohydrate, it's around 50 grams a day. That's for me personally. Wow, that's that is really low. You know, I, I don't want to throw out uh, numbers because I I'm not tracking right now. And I've what I've learned myself personally is every time I think I know what I'm eating and I go and measure it, I'm always off. So, uh, but every meal I eat has is pretty much balanced with proteins, fat, and carbs. So, and I'm eating whenever I feel hungry. So that's kind of how I'm I'm doing things right now. Is is 
I, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat. And when I eat, I'm going to make a good choice. I'm going to, I'm going to target my protein first. Uh, and I always rotate sources. So I mean, I had beef, uh, last night I had, i um, got, I got fish ordered and on the way right now, eggs like chicken. So I'm always rotating uh, my meats, my ca- I ca- go to carbs, uh, oatmeal right now and rice are probably the, and then some potatoes are probably my three staple uh, carbohydrates and every meal has pretty much a balance. So I'm eating very balanced right now. I'm not cutting anything. I'm not really trying to bulk aggressively or anything. I'm eating when I'm hungry. I'm making pretty damn good choices when I when I eat. The main thing that I'm focusing on, if anything, is just making sure I'm hitting protein because I think I've said this uh, at nauseum on the show that the thing that I lack is getting enough protein. And uh, I was noticing, in fact, I just bumped it, right? Even though I'm not tracking, I made an effort to get an extra meal in or double up uh, the meat in another meal because I've been sore. I've been really sore a lot more than I usually am. And so I'm trying to increase my protein take in even even more than what I'm at. Uh, if I had to guess, I'm definitely not you know, doing like one and a half grams per pound of body weight. I mean, I'm eating four meals. Uh, and they're probably averaging on the low end, 35 to 40 grams per meal, uh, on the high end, 60 to 70. So give you kind of a range. So now probably, are you trying, you're not trying to cut, you're not trying to do it. You're trying to maintain while workout. Yeah. So my group, my real goal is to actually, so I, what I love to do when I'm at this phase, right? So I'm at a, what am I a month and a half in of real consistency right now? Um, is I just, I don't want to see the scale really go up or down. I want to kind of hover right around where I'm at and see this nice even exchange. And so, and I'll keep doing that uh, and kind of staying to that protocol until I feel like I've hit a plateau. I feel like week over week, I'm still improving, you know, especially the weeks where I've been really consistent. I just came off uh, the a week and a half ago or whatever it was when we went to Vegas for four days. And that was the first four day break I've taken since we've been consistent. Uh, so I, w- I won't count that week as progress, right? Because mm-hmm. I don't, I didn't see Mitch progress right then. So this week will be another really good week for me. At the end of this week, I'll kind of assess where I see myself. If I still think I'm progressing, I won't really change much yet. I like what I see uh, until I start to see either strength gain slow down or body composition change slow down. I'll probably kind of keep eating that way. And then what I haven't decided is, will I push calories and try and put on a lot more lean body mass or will I cut and try and lean? And what will dictate that is how I feel. Um, because like I said, I've eh, a little achiness here and there, and that tends to happen when I start pushing 230 plus pounds, which is where I'm at right now. So I, I may switch gears and go leaner, but I am also enjoying kind of filling out my shirts again and feeling mm. big. So I, I haven't decided completely what I'll do with the diet yet. Mm. Yeah. I've, so initially I was trying to like get my metabolism all revved back up and, um, you know, adding in breakfast consistently and, uh, increasing carbohydrates. Um, so I was, I was doing that particular in the morning and then, uh, you know, for dinner, uh, with, with rice, potatoes and things like that. Um, you know, in the morning it was mainly like, you know, uh, uh, peanut butter and like things like that, <laughs> you know, I'm adding to my protein shakes and whatnot. Um, and fruit. Uh, so, and then I would have like this second breakfast with the, uh, scrambled eggs and bacon. And so I, I, I wasn't used to eating that much volume in the morning. So this has been something that I've, uh, I've done cause my activity massively increased again. And so then I started to feel all this energy surge. And so I wanted to, you know, fuel that, that process. And now I'm like at a point where I'm, I'm reducing carbs again a bit. So I'm just really just focusing on the morning. And then at, for dinner, I've actually reduced uh you know the amount of carbs i'm taking to just mainly this just getting it sourced from from uh vegetables i think this is a good opportunity too to share with the audience that we're starting to do this in fact i just did it last week for the first time uh Chokey is organizing this uh with all the founders right so uh, doug included so doug justin uh sal and myself and then i know she did it uh we're gonna i think it's wednesday she's gonna do this is every wednesday we'll do a day in the life so you'll actually get to see, like I just did it last Wednesday. So if you were paying mm-hmm. attention, you saw I and I'm posting every single meal, what I have, and at what time I have it at. Mm-hmm. So you guys can get an idea, like if you want to visually see what everyone's eating. Awesome, yeah. So all you guys on YouTube out there, watch the transformations. Oh, you shit talkers, <laughs> watch what happens, and then we'll see, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. Uh, you can also download some of our free guides and information. So if you want to learn how to get a better squat, uh, develop your arms better, your shoulders, your legs, get a better midsection, burn body fat more effectively, 
Go to mindpumpfree.com and download our guides. They're totally free. They cost nothing, and they're very valuable. Go check them out. And finally, you can find us on social media. Uh, Instagram is the place to get us. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Wrong. You can look at, you can speculate on what's going to happen in the future and how it's going to suck. No, no, no. Don't do that. Just literally take the energy, it's just energy, and and just shift it about three feet over here and start looking at how you can make this work for you. It's just